Greetings, welcome to NASCAR American Motor Mouths. Nate Ryan here with Kyle Petty. Dale Jarrett will also have Ty Gibbs joining us, IndyCar driver Alexander Rossi, Parker Kligerman. But first, we're going to start with the news, another busy news day in NASCAR. We learned this afternoon that Kurt Busch will miss his second consecutive cup race with concussion-like syndromes. He was not cleared to drive on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course after he missed last week's, week's race at Pocono Raceway because of this crash, which you see right here. So he will not be in the number 45 Toyota for 2311 racing at Indianapolis. Instead, Ty Gibbs, who as I just mentioned, will be joining us in a few minutes here on NASCAR American Motor Miles. Ty Gibbs will be starting for the second consecutive week in place of Kurt Busch after Ty Gibbs made his debut at Pocono last week. As you can see here, the statement uh, from 2311 Racing. Following medical evaluations after his wreck at Pocono Raceway last Saturday, Kurt Busch has not been cleared by the NASCAR medical team to return to competition this week at Indianapolis. So, a lot to unpack here, yes. KP and DJ. And I think maybe we start with uh, you know, the fact that this has been a topic of discussion this year in the NASCAR Cup Series. The next-gen car uh, has yeah. produced some hard hits, and in this instance, it's going to keep Kurt Busch out for the second consecutive Yeah, race. you know, I, I think if you talk to the drivers and you listen to what they say, they feel um, that, that they're hitting harder than they ever have. Um, I mean, a couple of guys that I've spoken to have, have looked at accidents from this year and then looked at accidents from the past, and they're like, man, I hurt twice as bad this year as, as that I hurt before. So NASCAR continues to look um, and, and evaluate some of the data. But, you know, when you, when you just look at that wreck, yeah. he looped around, back square into the wall in the past, and we saw this in the Xfinity race uh, on Saturday. The 18 car backs around into turn one, backs up into the wall, and drives off. No harm, no foul. Um, Kurt is missing his second race, almost with an identical crash. So there's something that's just transferring to the driver. The drivers are the weak link. The human body is the weak link in anything mechanical like this. Uh, so you hate it for Kurt, but listen, at least this day and time, there's somebody else making the decision for him because yeah, we wouldn't right. have made that would, decision. Right. We would have jumped right back in the car because that's what we had to do. Yeah, great point. Um, and I know this is a situation that NASCAR is looking into. I know the numbers that they see uh, from these crashes, which they have the data from uh, many years, uh, that, it, that it's not showing that these the crashes yeah. themselves are any harder. It's just the, the energy that's going to the driver's seat and, and, and these drivers are all talking about it. Everyone that you hear is saying kind of the same thing. It seems that maybe the 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 rear impacts and the, the side impacts are, are the worst for them. We've seen a couple of head-on crashes to where it wasn't quite as bad. Uh, so the rear of this car, we know it's extremely stiff. It had to be with everything and the way the, the yeah. next-gen car has been built and, and everything that the rear of the car has to do, yeah. basically. Uh, but we've got to figure this out uh, because, as you said, this would just be you know a normal crash right there, yeah. and you think, okay, well, they got to get out a backup car, and that's going to be the worst thing happening. Here, Kurt Busch is missing his second race. Yeah. yeah, and we talked about on the NASCAR NBC podcast this week, DJ, that, as you mentioned, that independent rear suspension yeah. essentially means that this is the car they have. It's con You can't really make construction changes at right. this point, and it's probably yeah. a focus more on the headrests Kyle, with the way drivers, when they hit the wall, the, the way they're kind of protected uh, yeah. around the headrest area. Mm. Okay. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. And, and, and I say this, and, and from, from this perspective, is that, again, all the headrest, uh, all, all that security, the driver is the weak link. Yes. The driver is the weak link. So, you know, your natural incl inclination is that car gets around backwards and you're coming in, you lean forward, you snap back. You're not gonna just lay your head, and if you do lay your head up there, your brain's gonna snap in your skull. Yeah. That's just the way it is, man. That, it's just the weak link, you know? And when it's that stiff, and, and I think Dale said it really well there, for whatever reason, if, if this is, if the impact is X, more of that X is transferring to the driver than in the past. The peaks may be the same, the, the durations may be the same, but for whatever, feel, for whatever reason, the, the more of that energy is coming straight to the driver's body. And, and I do believe there's constantly areas that you can change with that headrest, with that seat, but at some point in time, um, you've gotta go back to the back of the car and, and say, okay, 
This is where the, this is where are to the side of the car. This is where the impacts are coming from. How do we change it here? As evident, NASCAR did that with the walls. You know what I mean? Yes. That's why we have softer walls. Because they said, okay, eventually we gotta go to the wall and fix the wall. They went to the wall and fixed the wall. So eventually they'll have to come to the car. Um, they're just, they're, you can't this year. They're doing the best job they can this year with what they have. Uh, but I'm sure they were looking at it and there's a lot of evaluation going on. And the other piece of this is Ty Gibbs will make his yeah. second consecutive yeah. start in the Cup Series. F top 20 in his debut, which I know was hugely impressive. Obviously, already a lot of chatter uh, about Ty <laughs> Gibbs, uh, given the ongoing situation at Joe Gibbs Racing. And Ty Gibbs now joins us here on NASCAR America Motormouths. Ty, welcome to the program. And we'll just get started with the obvious. How does it feel to make your, your second cup start after making your debut at Pocono, being in the seat of well, the number 45 Toyota again? Well, hey, guys. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Great. All right. Yeah, well... You know, very excited to make my debut, but most of all, uh, you know, we're wishing Kurt, uh, you know, we're praying for him and, and hoping for his health, but uh, that he gets better. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm very excited to be able to make my second cup start and uh, the Monster Energy Toyota Camry TRD and, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be a cool weekend. So let me ask you a question. You, you got out of, um, you, you run the Xfinity race on Saturday at Pocono. Um, and, and I heard you say you spent time in the simulator, but it's really eye racing, so it's really not a simulator. But <laughs> let, let me ask you, my, my question is, yeah, there it my, is. <laughs> my, question, my question to you is, what was, what was the one thing that jumped out to you in, that, in, the, in the new car that was so different than what the Xfinity car was? What's that one thing that, that really struck you? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing was the rear end. Um, you know, the steering, I've had some uh, experiences with this new steering box and this steering, uh, you know, the, the new steering. So uh, the, the biggest difference was the rear end and getting used to, you know, how that was, uh, you know, handling uh, and x the cars, it moves around a little bit more in the rear and we kind of drive more in the rear. But with these new, uh, with these new next gen cars, uh, you know, the rear is really locked down um, and it's, and it's you know, the way the body is because, uh, we have a diffuser now. It's it's really low, so the only getting used to the rear end was definitely the biggest uh, challenge. I feel like for me, and once we kind of figure it out, I feel like I picked up speed and, and more speed and more speed. Well, Tom, let me say this: that you just continue to impress the majority of us. I think that that have watched you, you uh, in the Xfinity series, and and now to jump in that car and and listening and talking to drivers about how totally different it is uh it was just an amazing job as i sat and watched the race on sunday uh so incredible job there they haven't given you yet as you look at now an indie road course uh they haven't given you the two easiest spots to, to jump in and, and tackle to start with but i know you're up for the challenge i want to go back to saturday of last week though because I sat and watched one of the best Xfinity races that I've seen, and especially the last few laps of an Xfinity race, of two young drivers, knowing both of you how bad you want to win. And I'll tell you this up front, I would have only given about a 5% chance that you both were going to finish without <laughs> something happening there, uh, as much as you both won. But take me through those laps and, and walk through that. I know you didn't win the race, but it was a great performance of the way the two of you raced each other. Well, thanks, DJ. Yeah, you know, it was uh, it was definitely a little bit different. Uh, you know, I wish we could have won, but uh, you know, we had a very fast monster Detroit Gear Supra, and you know, uh, our the nine car uh, had four tires on to our none tire or to our zero tire, so we were on you know left down the old tires. But I feel like that just shows how fast our car was, and um, you know, I almost had them. Uh, I feel like I wish I would set myself up a little better, which I probably could have, and and got by them for the win, but. Uh, that's part of it. Learned a lot, uh, you know, about being in those positions last laps. Uh, so, you know, wish we could have got it, uh, you know, but a, we had a good point today all, all week. So um, we'll take that. So, Ty, you go from pulling double duty at Pocono, but this is sort of next level because you didn't find out at Pocono until race morning. Now you're going to be doing the whole shebang all weekend, Xfinity and Cup. Have you had the chance to prepare a little bit more? I, I'm sure you're doing the iRacing thing, but we, do you get a little more sim time? Do you get a little more preparation? And how are you gonna be attacking, uh, you know, turning so many laps at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course this weekend? Yeah, for sure, you know, we spent uh, you know, this whole morning, the last couple of mornings in the simulators getting prepared for, uh, you know, that TRD provides us with. Um, 
And, you know, I feel like I've made a lot of gains on there and I'm very excited. Uh, hopefully we can uh, have a good run in both cars this weekend. Uh, luckily I have both Monster, so I'm very excited to have Monster Energy on board. And, um, you know, thank you to Dave Gallon and Mitch Covington for all the support we've had and everybody that is there. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at without them. And I'm excited to go go back and run. And, you know, but we've had some successful sim days for sure. All right, so I, I want to ask this. So you filled in for Kurt, uh, as, as we just said. Um, and, and a driver who relief drives or fills in like that, their main job um, in that type of scenario, just finish the race. Just finish the race. You did a great job. You brought the car home. Uh, now, as, as Nate says, you've got all week to prepare. Now you get the race because this is your race. You show up from the very beginning. It's your car. You're driving it. What do you anticipate being um, the, the biggest hurdle for you to just go from the drop of the green and have that opportunity to race all day long. Yeah, you know, I think uh, the biggest hurdle will be going to the chicane, uh, you know, turn uh, four or five, I believe, um, you know, so uh, the, the chicane is probably going to be the biggest hurdle, I think, with this new car comparing, you know, going from Xfinity car to the Cup car, I think it's going to be different. So just the way the rear end is, I you know the way it, the how much grip you have and how much yaw, yaw you can give the car before you know you're going to spin out so just trying to find the find the edge basically and uh you know but hopefully we can uh have a good run you have turn five and six so um but i'm excited you know i feel like we've had good good sim days and um maybe i can go play some golf in there too <laughs> <laughs> nice plan there uh so ty as you know this is a call-in show this is the story of the day so we've got a lot of people lined up who have questions for you and we're going to start with Sudath from Pennsylvania. Go ahead with your question for Ty Gibbs. All right. Hey, what's up, Ty? Um, so everyone probably saw and woke up, saw you in the McDonald's uh, fire suit. Question, did you get to keep the fire suit? It's going to be your first cup you know, start. And what do you do like with that If for this week? Do you get your own fire suit? Are you going to rock the same one? Uh, yeah, so Kurt actually is – gonna give me uh you know the one i first started i'm very thankful for that and i'm gonna make sure i get that hung up uh maybe maybe those shoes i don't know uh you know but i'm very excited to be able to hang that up it'll be you know something that means a lot to me uh for my first cup start and uh, i'm very excited to you know be able to have that and uh you know i've got got text by some cool people too so you know it's been it's just been a cool weekend all around and i've you know i'm gonna keep some great stuff all right let's uh squeeze in another phone call uh marvin on the line Marvin, go ahead. How you doing, Tyler? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, man. I just got off work, but I figured I wanted to chat with uh, the new driver of the 45 car. So, buddy, we're heading to Indianapolis uh, Motor Speedway's road course, and my question for you is, after your 18th finish at Pocono uh, last weekend, what are you hoping to accomplish uh, top 10 or top 5-wise as a position for this weekend? Yeah, you know, I think we'll have a, you know, a very fast launch of Toyota Camry TRD. Uh, I feel like we've uh, done a lot of sim work, so I'm excited for it, and hopefully we can have a good run and, and you know, maybe build a break the top 10. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited, uh, you know, but uh, you never say never. You never know what can happen, so I'm going to go do my best. All right, well, you appreciate the car, call yeah. from Marvin Blue. You know, yeah, once you've man. taken a, a call from Marvin Blue, Ty, you're pretty much a, a <laughs> yeah. regular cup driver yes, now. Yes, you are. Uh, yes, you are. Yeah, I, got, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to treat this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we let you go, I just, I got to ask, Ty, I mean, there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of questions about your future, what, what series you're going to be in next year. I know I'm sure you're tunnel visioned and just focused on just doing the best job you can in both cars, but... How do you, I guess, keep focused and not think about that for next year? Because I know this is the Series Cup that you eventually want to be in, and you're going to get an opportunity here for the second straight race. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's definitely uh, you know not in my control, and I feel like with you know being in my shoes, and uh, you know, it's it's just hard. You got to focus on what you're doing now. You can't get hung up on the future or the past. I feel like you know the best quote I've ever heard is a good race car driver is not focused on the future or the past. He's focused on the present. Um, you know, and that's where you that's where you make wins, and that's where you're you know making speed. So that's where I'm focused at right now. I don't have um, you know, any. Uh, I'm just focused on the future. I don't really try to let myself dwell on you know what's going to happen and what's going to happen in the past. Uh, just trying to figure out what I'm going to do now and try to make my car go fast this weekend. Both of them. That makes sense. Uh, I think we yeah. got one more question before I let you go. We're squeezing a call from Caleb, who's got a question. I think about both of those cars. Caleb, go ahead. 
All right, thanks, guys. Hey, Ty, how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing great. Um, my curious question is, since you did very well at Pocono for both the Xfinity and Cup, um, which car did you like better, your Xfinity or the Cup car that you fill in for Kurt? I like my Toyota Supra and my Toyota Camry TRD, so... Uh, you know, it's definitely a hard decision between both of them, um, you know, so I don't, I couldn't, I don't know if I can give you the answer on that. It's like telling, you know, which brother I love the best. So I think I like both of them, you know, equally, and I'm very thankful to be able to be in both of them. Yeah, I think uh, beggars can't be choosers when it comes to racing in the top two divisions of <laughs> the NASCAR right. series. That's and he's right. already figured out the political side of yeah, the sport, too. Good, good, yeah, good yeah. answer, Ty. Yeah, that's good. You good got answer. the sponsor. <laughs> All you, the things down pat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ty, thanks again for Thank joining you, us, and uh, good luck this Thank weekend you. in Indianapolis. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, thanks, yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, DJ. I'll see you guys. Thanks for letting me come on. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so there's Ty Gibbs. What do you guys make? I know you know you guys have both have strong opinions about drivers in the Xfinity series and moving up to Cup. And mm -hmm. I think I've heard you say it, DJ, that you feel like if they think he's ready, move him up. And yeah, yeah. obviously they have a situation there yeah. in the 18 where they're not sure if Kyle Busch is coming back. That could be where he is next year. I'd like for somebody to tell me why he's not ready. I don't yeah. think that could come <laughs> yeah. from anybody that really understands yeah. what drivers are and how good they can be. And and right now, in particular, in my opinion. Uh, with the two cars, the Xfinity side of it, and with the cup car being what it is now, there's no reason to hold this young man back. I mean, I understand you have to wait till the sponsorship and an and available seat is there. Uh, you don't want to put him in something that's not good. I, I know his grandfather isn't going to do that, but I think he's ready for that. I always say that you can't take, don't take someone out of Xfinity just to put them into a cup if they don't know how to win. He's proven he knows yes. how to win. He's got that down pat. Uh, yeah. So the experience that he needs now is with this new car because that's what he's going to be racing for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's and that was exactly right. winning is a habit. Winning is a habit. You got to learn that habit. He's learned that habit. Yeah. He has a habit of winning no matter what he yeah. gets in. Yeah. And and we saw Rick Hendrick do it with with William Byron. He made that commitment. If you've got an owner willing to make that commitment, and his granddad is his owner, yep. okay? If you've got an owner willing to make that commitment, get him to cup as soon as you can, because ultimately that's where they want to be. Yep. That's where they want to be. And if you make that commitment to that driver to say, okay, we're just going to put you out there, do the best you can for a couple of years, learn, do it, get, get your stuff straight, I'm behind you. You don't have to worry about anything. That's a lot off the shoulders of any young driver, any young driver. We've seen so many guys like Ryan Priest, Ross Chastain, who have come through here and felt like this is my only chance. This is my only chance. Yeah. Once they get in a good car, Ty is not in that situation. This is not my only chance. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I've got time to learn. So yeah. he is in rarefied air, just as William Byron is. So I, I, listen, I say moving the cup as, as soon as you can get him there and, and let him learn there. Because in the case of both Ty and Byron, if like you said, KP, if they know they have that runway, yes. yeah. just accelerate it, right? Accelerate just get him up there as much as right. soon as possible. Yes. And then, you know, he, he sure. puts in a couple of seasons and then yeah. much like William Byron, we might be talking about him as a winner in season three in Cup. Yes, exactly. I think yeah. sooner than that. Yeah. I yeah. honestly do. Yeah. I, I mean, he's so very talented that, that he's going he's gonna to win. I know yeah. it's going against the very best. Uh, but, you know, he's raced these people, you know, I mean, he just, we, we watched him at Road America, uh, what yeah. he was able to do yeah. there and, and go win that race. So I, he's ready to challenge the yeah, best. For Will sure. it take him a little time? Yes, I'm not saying he's going to go win immediately, but I honestly don't think it will take him very long. He's that good. Yeah. All right. Well, a lot of eyes on Ty Gibbs this weekend at Indianapolis. A lot of eyes on some Joe Gibbs racing cars as well. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, the story of the week before being superseded by, Kyle, uh, by Ty Gibbs. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come back. Hey, I'm Travis Pachana, 11-time X Games gold medalist and founder of Nitro Circus. And now, we are bringing the most action-packed motorsport in all of racing straight to your living room. Nitro Rallycross. Cars that fly, tracks that thrill. This should be good. This could be good. Do not want to miss all the door-to-door -door action that you're going to see. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. We've never seen racing like Be sure to tune in to Nitro Rallycross, coming to you live on Peacock, July 30th and 31st, one week. Nitro Rallycross kicks off our busy motorsports weekend from Sweden, starting at 9 a.m. Saturday on Peacock. And then the big weekend in Indianapolis kicks off with Monster Jam at noon on CNBC, 
followed by both the NTT IndyCar Series and Xfinity Series on NBC. Finally on Sunday, it's the Sheck Round for World Superbikes at noon on CNBC. And then the Cup guys take on the Indy Road Course starting at 2 p.m. Eastern on NBC. I wonder what kind of mood Denny Hamlin is going to be in when he arrives at IMS. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. Denny Hamlin is maybe the most savage of NASCAR Cup Series drivers on social media, and we just saw it again in that Twitter video. In case you missed it, there was a, a piece of tape yeah, yeah. in the eagle's mouth, in addition to uh, the eagle's mouth, eagle being the Pocono Trophy, of course, and the champagne being from the Pocono uh, non-win that he had there. So even though he doesn't get to keep the win, he's keeping the spoils of victory. What do you guys think about all that? Okay. <laughs> Are you a fan? This is not something that probably would have happened. Uh, not a fan. In your area, no. Not a fan. Why not a fan? Okay, 1960, they disqualified a guy for winning a race. Okay, they took the win. 1960. This is so freaking big for this sport. This is, this is a, to me, this is a watershed moment where NASCAR has finally stepped back into the ring and said, we're gonna take care of this stuff. So it's a serious matter. It's a serious matter. And he's laughing about it, but he's the one that got his butt sent home without any points and without anything. You know what I mean? So I, to make fun of the seriousness of what this really is, listen, I, you can say what you want to say. It's a rule infraction. You can call it bending the rules, cheating, put whatever word you want on it. I, I don't care. They got a DQ. Show me Listen, Dale Jarrett didn't get a DQ. Dale Earnhardt Sr. never got a DQ. Okay, Richard Petty didn't get a DQ, and he run a big motor. That they didn't take mo they didn't take wins yeah. from you then. Yeah, that's the way. Yeah. But in today's time, if we go back in history, there's only a handful of this stuff. Yeah. So it's that's that's too big a moment to make fun of for so me. Re respect for me. the precedent. Yeah, you, here you're not respecting it. Years. That's a lack yeah. of respect. Yeah. That's a punk move. So okay, that's a punk move. DJ, I know you're a big fan of Twitter, Sorry. so I'm sure yeah. you probably. I, I, laughed at it. I, I did see that. that. So yeah, yeah in case. But yeah, I'm not not a fan. Of, I you know, as Kyle pointed out, yeah, this is a big deal. I mean, you know, things have been done since the inception of this, 1948 to through 2021. We're in a different era now, and I think NASCAR tried to explain that to the owners, to the drivers, yeah. to the crew chiefs, and to the manufacturers before this season started. There are parts and pieces here. And everybody knows which ones they are that are in the business that you are not going to mess with. And I realize that people are saying it's only, you know, I know Joe Gibbs put out that it's one piece of tape and we won't get into all the argument about yeah. how much was it. There was something there that's not allowed to be there. And so, you know, unfortunately, you know, they got caught with it. Uh, again, as we pointed out the other day and talked about, I wish they would have kept the third place car around. Not saying that Chase yeah. Elliott and them had anything yeah. like that either, but it should have been looked at in the same way, yeah. uh, you know, until you find it, know that you have uh, a, a winner that's legal uh, through. I know he passed yeah. everything else. Yeah. Would he have passed that? Have no idea. That, and I'm not speculating that they are doing anything yeah. like that. I'm just saying it would have, you know, eased a lot of minds if you have your third place car inspected the exact same way uh, all the way through that. Uh, but in, in this case, I mean, this is this is a big deal. And, and where we go from here, um, I, and I know that, you know, there's been stuff out there today that I saw that, that said Denny saying that he would have much rather had the fine and penalty that Michael McDowell and his team has yeah. received. Sure he would have. He's already in the playoffs. Yeah. You know, that this took away five playoff points from him. Uh, it took one away from, from Kyle Busch for the stage win that he had. Uh, so, yeah, sure, they would gladly give up 100 points that aren't going to make any they difference make any to difference. them. They didn't uh, give up anything. You know, it, because he's not going to be in to the, the bonus part of it at the end of the regular season anyway, uh, Denny's not. So, um, 
Yeah, I understand that. NASCAR didn't say, okay, who does this benefit more in this case versus this case with playoff? Yeah, that wasn't. The fact is, it, something was done that is not legal in today's world. We've been, fans yeah. have been asking for this, and I know a lot of fans out there are standing by what they wanted before, but if you're a fan and you said, we want this, uh, you know, we, we need races taken away, you know, wins taken away. If you, if you did something wrong, need it taken away. Well, if, if Danny or Kyle was your man and you were saying that and all of a sudden you're like, no, like, this shouldn't have been done for yeah. a piece of tape or two pieces of tape, whatever it is. I'm sorry, you can't, can't yeah, have both of those. Ways. This yeah, is no. the new world, you, and this is the way that yeah. we're going to go about it. Probably won't be the last time yeah. that something like That's this right. happens. That's right. It probably won't be the last time. But here, here's the thing, okay? If you play a game and you play at this level, then you have to respect the integrity of the game, and you have to inspect the integrity of the rules. And that video is a disrespect yeah. to, yeah. The, to the game for, for me. <laughs> right. Okay? Now, it's cute. I, I got you. Yeah. I got you for that generation of TikTok and all that stuff. Yeah. It's cute. I got yeah. you. But it, it is a it's a disrespectful move to the integrity of the sport and to the integrity of the game. When the sport is trying to build that integrity by sending you home, showing the world that we're willing to make that big call on a big team, on a big team, we're willing to make that call and make something happen because. I can tell you for a fact, eight or ten years ago, they wouldn't have made that call. Yeah, they they just wouldn't have made that call. Yeah, and I said this the other day that I'm 99.9% .9 sure that that Kyle Busch or nor Denny Hamlin, their names are attached with yeah. the DQ and and for cheating, if that's what everybody yeah. wants to call it, however you want to look at it, mm -hmm. uh, that they had no idea, no idea what was done before that wrap was put on that car. No idea. That, that this was done. No I, way. Quite certain there's a lot of people at Joe Gibbs Racing that didn't know yeah. that this was yeah. something that was very yeah. serious. Yeah. So you, you can't, bl I'm not blaming them no. for, for what happened. They're just, you know, unfortunately, and, you know, we, we credit them with the win, but they also yeah. get the blame because yeah. their names yeah. associated no, with there's, it. There's, the there's a lot of collateral damage here. There and is. that's why we saw Toyota come out with this really strong worded essentially apology they were very contrite I mean Toyota is a company that takes ethics extremely seriously they went yes. through the Michael Waltrip scandal yep. 15 right. years ago at the Daytona 500 they've been through this uh, Gibbs also put out a really yep. strongly worded kind of contrite like hey this is what happened we're never gonna do this again we've explored it um, and that's why you know I want to get to the callers but it, for me, like I enjoy watching Denny's video, oh, and yeah. I enjoy watching the no, tweets no from question. the Dawsonville pool room, where yeah, they're no kind yeah, no of question. trolling Joe Gibbs Racing while celebrating the fact that their guy Chase Elliott got the win. But how do you strike the balance, I guess, between respecting that this is unprecedented in the modern era, but also maybe well, having a little bit of fun with it? Yeah, but but okay. So I, I will say this, uh, and uh, and I will, and I'll, I'll look at it this way. And and you answered you you basically put it in perspective. Toyota doesn't like this. You yeah. think Toyota's doing a video like that? No. Okay. You think Joe Gibbs is, is doing a video like that, sitting at his kitchen table? No, because they respect the game, and they want to be a part of the game, and they want, they want to be inclusive. You're always going to have, no matter what, no matter in, in sports, you're going to have the fans and the people. The Dawsonville pool room is not Hendrick Motorsports, uh -huh. okay? It's not. It's not connected to Hendrick Motorsports. Yeah. It's only connected to the Elliots because they grew up in that town. They don't own the Dawsonville. It's, it, so if Joe Smith over here throws up a banner, I yeah. got no complaint about so that. So that trolling is okay. That, that's but okay. if you're but, a cup driver, maybe don't do this. But if you're a cup driver and your name <laughs> okay. is associated with Toyota yeah. and with Joe Gibbs Racing and you want to be a champion driver and you want to do these things, I, I just don't think that, to me, that's just, I don't, I don't appreciate it. Let me say that. I, I don't appreciate the way it makes the sport look. Okay, I want to squeeze in some phone calls because we yeah, not only had the sure. disqualifications of the 11 and the 18, we also had a penalty of the 34, Michael McDowell this week as well. I want to go to Bradley, uh, who I think wants to ask about that. Bradley, welcome to NASCAR American Motor Mouths. Hey, I got a question about that Ma Michael McDowell penalty on how how is that so fair to him and his team, but the 18 and the 11 are just getting such a harsher one with taking that win away. I know that you guys elaborate on that a little bit more, but that just seems like Kyle Busch has even a more chance of leaving uh, Joe Gibbs Racing and being potentially taken over by, let's just say, Juan Pablo Montoya or Haley Deegan. Any input? 
All right, thanks for the phone well, call, Well, you lost Bradley. me on the Montoya yeah, and the DEI. I don't, I don't yeah, know if we answered answer the that. last part of that. That's, yeah. that's a pretty much yeah. a bridge too far. But we can discuss the Michael McDowell yeah. side of this. Uh, so they get penalized 100 points, $100,000 fine, lose their crew chief for four races because NASCAR finds an improperly modified part in a R&D center inspection yeah. midweek on the number 34 Ford. Yeah. How does that stack up, I guess, against I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand did. it. I, I, I don't. Because what the 18 and the 11 had was an improperly modified part. Is that not right? Correct. I mean, okay. essentially. The, okay, the, so why the, is it not the same? I, I think why the way it was explained was the tape was placed on the front fascia and that altered the integrity of the An improperly fascia, modified which, part. Which is a part. Yeah. yeah, so let's, I mean, how technical, listen, it depends on what the definition of is is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, let me ask so, you this. You know should what I'm saying? Yeah, should it have been let, we're, we're going to use the, the car that won the race, took yeah. the checkered flag first, so Denny Hamlin. Should that car have then not only had the race taken away, but then been fined points and money to That's it? the question. So because, that's the question in my mind. Because I think that if, we, if I look at it, I'm saying that, that what Denny Hamlin and his team lost is way more significant to them than what $100,000 and, and 100 points would have been. Yeah. They'll, they'll pay that all day for a win, yeah. you know, in the yeah. position they're in because they have multiple wins. Yeah. They're not in the position to gain any more playoff points uh, through the, the regular season championship. So this is way more harsh for them in that respect. And I think that's kind of what Denny was saying that, that, mm -hmm. that with that. So if you want to, I, I think that, that what they did is right, other than if you're going to add on to those two cars, uh, the hundred thousand yeah. dollars and the hundred points, then it, I would be in favor of that to make it more. Yeah. Here's 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 the thing. Here, here's the thing. And I, I've always the, so I've I've always been this way. So I, I'm going to say this is I bring my car to the racetrack and I present it for inspection. Okay. If you find something wrong with it, I should be allowed to go fix it. I've not I've not gone out on the racetrack. I've not done anything. I just yeah. presented it for inspection. If I get through qualifying, if I get to qualifying and you find something and I have to go back through the line a thousand times, there's penalties for that. There's, yeah. there's, there's, because now you, I was good, but now I'm not good. If you run a race and you cheat the entire field, you've, you've had an advantage to, then you should be penalized something. Okay. Now what I, what I look at this is this car run first and this car run second. So we inspected them. So we DQ'd them. The other car we didn't inspect, we just took it back to the, we didn't inspect it until we got, inspect it there too. Mm -hmm. Inspect it there and make that decision there. Yeah. Make that call there mm -hmm. because then it's equal across the board, okay? If we take Denny's car and don't inspect it there and take it back to, to, to R&D, now is it an improperly modified right. position with 100 points and $100,000 right. and a crew chief? And all, is, is that but, where it changed? Does it change on the highway coming from Pocono to Charlotte, and that's my question: Is how do you yeah. how do you correlate these two? Well, that's why NASCAR saying? did change the policy because they wanted to figure out the winner at the racetrack. Yeah, they going back four years ago, that was where you had you know Kevin Harvick winning the playoff race at Texas, and then you find out on yeah. Wednesday when it's at the yeah. R&D Center, yeah. hey, we're taking away this being yes. eligibility to reach the championship round. And that was why NASCAR, starting in 2019, said Agreed. we're going to start DQing people in, in the Cup Series, which yeah. hadn't happened yep. until this week. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I just think I, I, I just think the process that and, and I understand completely and, and listen and I'm probably way off base and I apologize if I am. It, it exposes a a hole or a weakness in the in the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and I, I, I go back. Rich Petty won a race at Charlotte with big motors and left side tires on the right. Okay, and. and before they could find the second place car, it was back in Ingle Hall of North Carolina yeah. being disassembled. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't know whether it cheated or not. Yeah. So you had to give the win to Richard Petty, and that's it. Yeah. So they should keep all these cars at the racetrack, like Dale said, until you find a legal one. Yeah. Just keep running them through there until you find one that's legal. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and let's and if there has to be a post race inspection for some of this stuff without going back to R and D to to do all this stuff, because you know, I, I'm, I'm poor, you know, I take B J McLeod. He runs 38. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm finding him a hundred thousand dollars and stuff because I took him back to the mm -hmm. to the and he didn't get fined. Don't get me wrong, that's not what I'm saying. But you can randomly pick a car and right. penalize him on Tuesday. I don't like that. Yeah. I just don't like that process 
it just doesn't look right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just I don't like talking about penalties, period. Yeah, so I don't either. I don't let's either. get back to talking about racing. Uh, yeah. On the other side, Indianapolis Motor Speedway will host NASCAR and IndyCar this weekend. We'll have one of the IndyCar drivers joining us, Alexander Rossi, when we come back. Three wins out of three at Donington Park. The is down! Shades of his 2019 campaign. Welcome back to Motor Routes. Each year, Comcast gives out a community champion award for those within the sport of NASCAR that use their platform to help those in their communities. Previous winners included Joey Logano and Bubba Wallace. But this year, the nominees have been expanded to anyone in NASCAR. This week is the last chance to nominate someone. Just go to ComcastCommunityChampion.com to submit your nominee. The finalists will be selected at the end of August. James, help me reveal this, a Peacock exclusive, the Hate Cauldron. We got a little bit of Grosjean in action in there, and he was coming together with his teammate, Alexander Rossi. You throw all these ingredients nice and spicy into there, Townsend. We're trying this for the first time. We're going to mix it up here in Toronto. <laughs> Tensions are rising. Drama for sure in just a few minutes' time. Oh, uh, stay tuned. And remember, there are concrete walls here. There's no runoff room. <laughs> Alexander Rossi in it here to I stir see. the pot for us as well. Well, good to see <laughs> Alexander Rossi coming over to play along with the yes. Nate Cauldron that Townsend Bell had created and his podcasting co-host James Hinchcliffe was also a part of as well. Uh, Alex, thanks for being here. Um, going into Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course, I presume you're, you're pretty good with people. There's no, there's no hate uh, meter up for you at this point. No, you know, I think um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of news in IndyCar the past couple of weeks, and it kind of, it kind of all distracted from the, the meltdown that was Mid Ohio for for us as a team. But um, yeah, I mean, everything's uh, good. Um, we've now had two races, well, three races really since then, and everything's kind of calmed down a little bit. So I'm looking forward to this final part of the season. Look, you, you go to Indy, and, and we talk about it for us. Daytona. Anything you win at Daytona is big. When you go to Indy, whether it's the oval, whether it's the road course, is that the way you approach it? Anything in Indy is big. For sure. You know, I mean, it's it's the home for us in in so many different respects, um, and it's it's just such a unique a unique place. It's an amazing racetrack to to get to to be a part of um, every time that I drive in there, whether that's for you know, an event or a, just a media appearance or a sponsorship thing or just to <laughs> drop something off, you know, your, your breath kind of gets taken away by the the magnitude of, of what is IMS. So 100%, um, obviously the 500 is the, the big one for us, but um, any time that you can kind of be on the podium there and, and collect a trophy from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is a, is a very good day. Yeah, so my question is about the previous race this year that you you ran on the road course in the rain i mean that I mean, rain might not even be the uh, the fair term there uh, because it's more like a monsoon the, the difficulty during that and, and then what you're going to have with the dry racetrack uh, that has been changed somewhat this year yeah so so going back to the rain what was so challenging about that was it it started out um kind of damp and then it, it actually dried out a little bit um, and my teammate Colton Herta was able to, to, he was the first one that went to the, the dry tire on still a pretty, pretty wet track and, and was able to make that work. And, um, that, that really won him the race. So, so there was a, there was a part that started out wet, then it got dry for, I'd say 60% of it. And then the last kind of third was, was kind of monsoon conditions, which was wild for us, um, because this was the first time that we had really raced with the aero screen on the IndyCar in, in those types of conditions. So it was a uh, learning on the fly for, for all the drivers for sure. Um, but obviously coming back in, in now the end of July, um, it's going to be a, a warm race, very dry, 
um, and, and a completely different event than what we had in May. So, you know, the track for us, you know, the, the curbs and, and such have changed for, for Cup. For us, it, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. And this is a track that over the past three years, we've, we've all raced on a lot. So um, it's, it's enjoyable to race at the Speedway, but also it's um, a little bit, uh, um, uh, it's a place that we've been a lot with, let's just put it that way. Yeah, you guys have had multiple visits on this layout. Uh, in each of the last three seasons. And it's been a pretty good track for you, Alex. I mean, you finished fourth in this race a year ago. You've got two podium finishes at the IMS road course. I know this season hasn't gone the way you, you hoped, but I think it's been a little bit better than last year. It's certainly better than 2020. Uh, you know, the pull at Road America, I know it's kind of been up and down, but it seems like road courses have been a little bit more of a strength. Do you feel good going to this weekend? I do. I mean, this is a track that, you know, as a, as a group, we haven't really excelled at. Um, the fact that we got those results, it was a pleasant reminder, actually, because I, I wasn't super optimistic going into this weekend. But we had a good test there uh, a month and a half ago or so, and, and that was in pretty hot conditions. So we're, we're hoping that that, that translates. Um, and as you said, yeah, it's been a much better year than the past two um, and you know, it's, it's just, it's hard in this championship these days, you know, there's so many little things and, and, and variables. And, um, you know, you look at, you look at Joseph, for example, right. He has four, four wins, um, and is I think third or fourth in the championship. So it's just crazy. You gotta, you gotta be getting those fourth and fifth place finishes. And that's something that we really haven't been able to achieve a whole lot this year. Okay. In the past, we've seen the, the, the IndyCar, the, the series, uh, run, in conjunction with the truck series and, and with others. And then when all of a sudden it's IndyCar and it's Cup, I mean, we were so freaking excited uh, to see you guys at the racetrack with the Cup guys. When you ease in there, do you get the itch to move over to the other garage just to try that one time, uh, the Cup stuff? You know, I've, I've gotten to, to pay a lot more attention um, to, to what's going on in Cup through my relationship with Chase, obviously both of us being being Napa uh, racing guys. Um, but, you know, I think, I don't know, dare I say this, but I think that was the only good thing to come out of COVID. You know, I think for so many years, there was th this kind of opposing belief that Cup and that uh, Cup and IndyCar shouldn't be on the same weekend and it'll take away from, from one or the other. And because of, of all of us, we were forced to kind of adapt and try and just get races on the schedule. It, it made sense. Um, for that merger to happen, and here we are three years later um, still doing it. So I think it's, a, it's an amazing event. I'm, I'm so happy and, and honored to be a part of it, and, you know, I hope we can do more. You know, I think that you're introducing, you know, a, a fan base to a, different, to a different style of the sport, whether that's an IndyCar fan watching the cup race or, or vice versa. And, you know, I think it's, it's a positive for, for everyone involved. So I, as a driver, love watching it on Sunday, um, watching, watching the guys kind of go through the same processes that we do in, in, in a very different way. Um, so it's, it is an enjoyment uh, that, that I get and something I look forward to each year. Yeah, I think we all love the crossover. We certainly love hearing your, your passion yeah. uh, and emotion when talking about it. Uh, before we let you go, Alex, uh, so this is coming to the end of your seventh season at Andretti. You've got five races left with the team before you move to Aero McLaren SP. I know you've got a lot of memories with that team. Uh, 2016 Indy 500 win. I, how do you feel about this, this closing kick? Because, uh, again, like we just talked about, you've, you've had your moments this season. Are, do you feel like you might be able to close this out at Andretti with maybe one more win before you move on? I, I really want to. I think we all want to. Um, you know, Michael has has given me an amazing opportunity to, to find a new home in my career six years ago at, in the NTT IndyCar Series, and and we definitely had some 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 highlights um, in, in that time period. But you know, the last two and a half years haven't haven't met any of our expectations. So it'd be amazing to, to close the loop um, with with some sort of success story, so that we can all kind of part ways uh, with one last fond memory to, to, to remember and take with us going into our futures. All right, well, uh, thanks again for joining us on NASCAR American Motor Mouse. We wish you much luck in yeah. trying to get to victory lane this weekend. That's Alexander Rossi. When we thanks, come Andrew. back on the other thanks, side from break, man. NASCAR American Motor Mouse will talk to another driver who will be racing in Indianapolis this weekend, Parker Kligerman, making an Xfinity Series start at Indy. There he is.
Welcome back, NASCAR America Motor Mouse, joined by Parker Kligerman, who won on a road course in the Truck Series earlier this season. Going to take a crack at an Xfinity Series car on the road course this Saturday. So, Parker, I understand you've already been preparing simulation yes. sessions today. You're feeling good? Yeah, so I've been in, uh, Kyle Petty would say it's not a sim because it's been iRacing, but uh, <laughs> I personally think it's a sim. It's all I got right now. So I've been working on that. Thankfully, iRacing added the Indianapolis road course configuration that we run uh, now, so that's good. And I, uh, I needed it because the last time I was on this track was back in 2014 in the Indy Lights car when I did a test there. So I needed some help, a refresher, but thankfully uh, I feel like I've gotten a lot of laps and started to watch a lot of tape and sort of have the idea of how to get around this place. And I'll need it because it looks like the Xfinity Series is absolutely stacked this weekend, uh, not just because I'm in it. It looks like uh, so many cup drivers obviously want to be in there and a lot of road course drivers. So it's going to be a very competitive uh, race on Saturday. Well, look, look, coming off of a win, how much confidence does that give you, though, man? I mean, seriously. I mean, and we talk about it all the time. We talk about momentum for other teams as a driver just for you. And it's a different team, but from a driver's perspective, what, what does that give you? Man, it's, it's weird. You know this. DJ knows it. But it's like it just allows you to be so confident in, like, some of the things you're thinking about and how you go about it preparing. And even just on the sim, I'm looking at different corners, and I'm thinking, all right, I did that at Mid-Ohio, and that worked. All right, so that's the feel I need here. And it just it confirms things, right? Like, it takes away your questioning of, like, is that the right way to do it? Should I do it this way? Should I roll this much speed? That sort of thing. And we get, uh, you know, look here at the track on board of Martin Truex. This place is difficult, right? You've got huge, like long, heavy braking zones. This one down to turn one has got to be one of the longest braking zones in NASCAR outside of turn five at Road America. I mean, they have an 800 board. I don't know a racetrack in America or in the world that has an 800 braking marker, and we use it. I mean, you'll brake at the 700 down to first gear, then you'll get up to second. You'll be begging the rear tires throughout the lap to sort of hook up around here, especially down here in the turn two. like in three and four, down to four, I think this is almost like turn two at Mid-Ohio a little bit. And then you have that crazy chicane that we, we remember last year, which was interesting. Um, they've changed those curbs, so they're now permanent curbs. You'll go all the way out here, as you see, to the grass, fly down this back stretch, and once again, they, the boards on the right start at 700 over here, which is just wild, once again. Uh, these are long braking zones, back down to first gear. And then you'll head into this sort of chicane complex, eight, nine, 10, it's pretty slow. The car's begging once again for grip. You're gonna get over here to 10 and once again, just be leaning on that left rear, trying to get the throttle down. You'll go through turn 11 and head towards 12 where you'll rejoin the banking. And over here, this is one of the hardest braking zones because you're on the banking right now. Now you're asking the car to stop and turn and the track starts to go away as you get away from the banking. And then you go into turn uh, 13 here where you can basically protect the key is use all the curb and then on the final corner back on the front straightaway once again punishing that left rear tire and that's the thing about this place like it's a mix of heavy braking zones and absolutely just punishing the rear tires trying to put the throttle down so it's a very interesting racetrack designed for our cars and for stock cars but I'm looking forward to the challenge. That was a great answer because yeah. you took you answered every single question I had in mind for you there, Parker. But uh, now I will say this: most road courses uh, that that you have competed on, I would say, even the Roval at Charlotte. Who knew that the infield at Charlotte had elevation change? Yeah. But there's really no elevation changes here. It's pretty flat uh, throughout the entire road course here, right? It is, and I think that's deceiving, right, DJ? Because, like, you think of elevation change adding sort of a difficulty factor, but being flat is difficult because it's hard to have, you know, markers, and it's hard to kind of tell exactly, uh, you know, to have sort of things to lean on in sense of, like, you know, at times when there's camber in a corner or there's elevation change, that changes sort of how you brake or how much you can lean on the tire of the car. When it's just table top smooth, flat, like, you know, billiard table smooth, that's tough. Like that's a difficulty or difficult thing in itself. And then really, you know, the only elevation change is where the track sort of gains some of that banking up on the race of the oval portion. And then when it loses it, when you're coming off that banking. So that's, uh, it just adds a whole different sort of difficulty to this racetrack that you don't run into it like a natural terrain road course, like a Road America or Watkins Glen, where you've got the huge elevation change that is difficult for a different reason. This is difficult because it's so flat and it just makes it very hard to get the car hooked up. No, he's, he keeps talking about elevation changes in the banking. And what's he talking about? Six inch elevation change? <laughs> I mean, what, what are we talking about here, Parker? I mean, 
So le listen, listen. So cup wise, cup wise, as we yep. look at the cup race th this weekend, um, I mean the cup series road course wise has been all over the map this year. When, when we look at the guys who have, who have run well, who, as you look into your crystal ball and you see the cup drivers that are running the Xfinity race, who do you look at this week and you think, okay, these guys are going to bring something special to Indy? Man, you know what's been so funny about the Cup Series this year is, like, it's been hard to do that. I, you guys see it from uh, our, our standings in the NASCAR fantasy. I'm in dead last. I've been terrible at this this year. Like, absolutely awful. Uh, and our buddy, our producer, Aaron Feldstein, does a great wrap-up each weekend where we c that basically shows how bad I am. And I think because of that <laughs> is because it's been, like, it's been so hard to predict who will be good and when and where. And I think uh, I was just asked this question earlier today, and I thought, you know, if I had to pick a car that might surprise, and I don't think it would be a surprise, but I say in that they would do something big this weekend, I looked at the 34 of Michael McDowell on that Front Row Motorsports team. But with everything that's come post-Pocono and the distraction that comes along, let alone just the situation they're in now points-wise and with losing to crew chief, unless as they go through the appeal, he can be back. All of that's just a distraction, right? So I just think that sort of maybe takes them out of the, that sort of conversation a little bit. Um, but I looked at them being really good. You know, you have the 17 of Chris Buescher, who's run so well at the road courses. Obviously, RFK has been fast. So I think, like, it's been hard to quantify. The 9 of Chase Elliott, though, he's been fast everywhere. He was fast at Road America, which was the first time we saw those guys be good on a road course this year. I think that could be a car to watch. And I know that's not a surprise anyway, but that's one I have my eye on. I'll probably be totally wrong, and he'll run 30th, and my fantasy team will be ruined just like everyone. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not yeah. choosing him for my fantasy league hey. because you just talked about it. <laughs> Don't feel bad about your fantasy team, Parker, unless you had Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin at Pocono. <laughs> yes, I, probably, yeah, I definitely did. Everybody. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. Everybody. Yep. Uh, so I got a question. We were just watching the follow along there. That was great uh, information that yes. you gave us. But the track's a little different this year, uh, thankfully. Uh, the fabricated steel in turn six is gone. It's replaced by permanent concrete curbing, which hopefully we'll have as dramatic a race, but maybe not quite as long with a curb that doesn't collapse or implode or whatever happened last year. What, what, do you think that will impact uh, the cup race and even the Xfinity race at, well at all this year with having the concrete curb there? I, I don't think it'll have a big effect as much as it just won't have hopefully the devastating effect that the other one had. And then yeah. getting rid of those turtles, man, I'm anti, not, I like turtles, the actual animal, I do not like turtles at curb. I think they're just ridiculous. They have no purpose being on a racetrack. Get rid of them. Let us go over there. If you build the, if you pave it, then we're allowed to run on it. That's the way yeah. I look at it. So get rid of those. Yeah. Good point. I agree. Yeah, All, right. I'm All right. So yeah. I'm glad we're going to look forward to a, a better race then with yeah. uh, a better racetrack. Um, Parker, uh, thanks again for Thank joining you, us. And, Thank uh, you. Good luck. Good luck this weekend. Good luck, Thank dude. you, guys. Appreciate See it. A couple it's going to be a tough one. I'll need it. <laughs> All right, so we just heard Parker's predictions for potential dark horses this weekend. You guys have any thoughts? Five races to go here till the play till the playoffs start. Anybody oh my gosh! Going to come out of nowhere to win this race? Uh, no. Uh, you know, I, I'm going with um, Chase um, Briscoe. Briscoe. Okay. Briscoe. Almost thought, won it last yeah, year. Yeah, almost the last year. With I, yeah. I'm just that's yeah. my guy. I think Rodney Childers and Kevin Harvick have to do something completely different. I think they're realizing that now. Maybe not just in this race, but yeah. the, the next five coming up, that, yeah. that they have to do something to put their driver in that position to capitalize and get a win. If they're finding a lot of speed, and that could be this weekend. All right, yeah, they come with a lot of desperation. I like Ryan Blaney rebounding from a really oh, tough good. Pocono. So. Yeah. Former road course winner as well. Yep. That's all we got here at NASCAR America Motor Miles. Thanks for watching Indianapolis this weekend on NBC.